Okay, so this topic is near and dear to my heart uh, because I have suffered from anxiety for a long time. I used to have crippling panic attacks uh, where I would get so anxious that my hands would go to sleep, my face would tingle, my vision would start to blur, I would think I was having a heart attack, and it, it was horrible. It was absolutely horrible and no way to live, no way at all. So I spent years trying to figure out how to get a handle on it, how to calm myself down, uh, talking to people, how to make it better, and I've found some things along the way that have really, really helped me. I have come so far from where I was, and don't get me wrong, it still exists, and once in a while it'll still creep up in, and I will have to make sure that I stay on top of it, and I really do everything in my power, uh, supplement-wise as well as mental-wise, to really keep it at bay so it does not control my life. Because as you very well know, uh, if you have anxiety, which I'm sure you do, you're here watching this blog, uh, but if you don't, you're very lucky, but I'm sure you know just how debilitating and crippling it can be. Uh, it's no way to live life, no way at all. So today, today we're gonna be hitting a very, very important topic to me and uh, to a lot of people, and that is using cannabis, indica, and sativa to treat anxiety, which ones are better, comparing the two strains together, seeing what pros and cons each one has, and which one is the best for you and your specific needs for your anxiety. Obviously, everyone's chemi chemistry is different and really, we gotta figure it out. Gotta fine tune it. So, let's look at it together. Let's go through this information, let's see what we can find, and let's figure out something that works great for you, uh, like it works for me, and really be able to get a handle on the beast to live our lives and live our lives at a higher quality than what anxiety leaves us in. Let's go. So medical marijuana to treat anxiety, or recreational marijuana if you live in such a state. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, there is so much evidence that it literally has the ability to replace pharmaceuticals or at least take the edge off uh, to be able to manage your anxiety a little bit better. Now, a lot of people think that it has harmful effects or can increase the anxiety. Uh, there's some information around that that we'll address later, but for now, just know that it absolutely has the ability, if done correctly and applied correctly, to be able to help reduce the anxiety that you are suffering and be able to have a little bit better of a quality of life. So I'm going to read you a little chunk from our blog because I don't want to get the information wrong because I feel like this is really important to segue into the different information of the types of medical marijuana. So research indicates that tarpenes, cannabinoids, can combine to improve and modify the effect of each other. The molecules affect the signs of anxiety in varying ways. Some cannabis strains uh, and extracts function well to produce high cannabinoid levels. Some of the positive effects of taking cannabis strains may include increased creativity, uh, relaxation, and euphoria. The effects can significantly ease anxiety. Uh, cannabis manages neurotransmitter levels that assist in balancing our anxiety levels. So what it does is it actually affects the way that our brain fires in the electricity impulses. The neurotransmitters can dump different things like dopamine, serotonin, they can block other types that create anxiety. So it has a lot of different benefits when you look at it molecularly and the way that it operates in our brain and can cause a lot of different uh, varied results that can create a positive outcome and impact on anxiety. So anxiety signs treated with medical cannabis. Uh, some things you may not realize can be caused by anxiety. It causes so many different phantom symptoms around that it's really hard to trace it to what it could be sometimes. That's why it's so vitally important to be able to have a proper diagnosis or at least a direction to know that you are having anxiety. If you feel that anything's off or you're just not quite mentally right uh, go ahead and go to your doctor and figure out what's up because you don't want to live like this anymore and frankly you don't have to so some symptoms that it can decrease is insomnia concentration difficulties, and fatigue if you have any of those, those may be signs that you're having anxiety, and they may also be signs that medical marijuana can definitely help. So, sativa or indica, which one works better for you? Well, some strains are a hybrid and have both, and others have just one or the other. So, indica, indica you can think of as indicouch. 
it's the one that's gonna create the relaxation in the body, relax the muscles, allow the mind to hopefully relax, kind of get you out of the, the constant thoughts in your head and be more in the moment. It is fantastic to help with appetite. It's fantastic to help with sleep issues and it's like insomnia. It is just overall great for pain relief, etc. That is Indica. Sativa, sativa is more of your upper. Sativa is the one that will put you more in a good mood. It'll make you a little bit more energetic. It will really kind of get you up and about and ready to do a project, ready to kind of just live your life. That's really the difference between them, but let's look a little bit more in depth. So Indica. Indica you can remember because it's more of the Indica couch. <laughs> it's the one that relaxes your muscles, it relaxes your body, it helps you just kind of melt into that couch, feel good, it allows some of the stress to melt away from you, and allows you to be a little bit more distracted with that body high if you've ever heard the term. It's really fantastic for insomnia or any other sleep issues, it's fantastic for appetite issues and just getting that relaxation and really getting in the groove of feeling good. But we don't constantly want to just be sleeping all day or wanting to be in the couch or wanting to be, you know, kind of inactive because obviously that's gonna create more anxiety and more depression. So that leads us to Sativa. Sativa, it's more of your upper. It's the one that's going to give you energy. It's going to make you feel more euphoric. It's going to give you uh, the ability to go out, do projects, and really just feel that edge gone in a higher state of mood, an elevated sense of thought. And so that one is really fantastic for the daytime and when you need to be functioning and you need to, you know, <laughs> live your life. So when you couple both of them together, obviously you can see the huge benefits of both. You have one for sleepy time and nighttime, and you have one for daytime and functioning. And when married together, you can get awesome effects too that really give you euphoric sense uh, with the relaxation of the body as well. So it's going to be up to you to kind of experiment with both, to experiment with hybrids, and really be able to fine tune what's going to be the best for you and your specific conditions to be able to have a higher quality of life each day. So with all of this in mind, let's go ahead and look at kind of some different topics that you can go through to be able to fine tune what you need. Obviously, we know that sativa boosts the serotonin levels, puts you in a higher elevated mood. It's more like an antidepressant and Indica is more of the relaxer, the sleepy time one, and it really can incre increase the dopamine in your body, which allows you to relax. So some tips for you to pick the correct one because obviously you want to start small and you want to work yourself up and you want to find out which one is better for you, Indica or Sativa or a hybrid of both. And obviously as we've already stated, they do very different things. So the first thing you want to look at, the right tip for what you need is the chemotype. So the chemotype, that's a balance between how much CBD and how much THC is in the particular strand. Uh, CBD and THC are different cannabinoids that exist within the strain and within the plant itself, and they do different things. THC, that gives you more of that classic high that you would think of when you think of reefer madness or all of the other old uh, half-baked, all of those types of <laughs> highs, right? And CBD, that's more the medicinal side, the more relaxing side that you don't really feel feel that much. You just feel a little bit more euphoric. Some strains have really high THC and almost no CBD and others have really high CBD and barely any THC and they work very differently. So you really want to figure out which one works good for you and how much THC you want before you have undesired results. Because too much THC can lead to some undesirable effects like increased heart rate uh, and a little bit more anxiety inducing things. So you really want to make sure that you're easing your way in and finding what you're comfortable with. So the first tip is the right chemotype as stated. So that is to find the right balance of the CBD and the THC for you and your specific needs so you're not having undesired results or unhelpful results. And the second major tip is to find the correct terpene. So terpene, that is more how it smells and how it tastes. So if you want something that smells good and you want something that tastes good, you're obviously going to have a more desired result from it and overall a better experience with that strain. You want to make sure that you like the high from it, you like the smell of it, you like the taste of it. 
those are all really important. And the final tip is overall potency. Just as I was kind of talking about before, you don't want to have something that's too strong and getting you undesired results or something that's not strong enough and getting you under desirable results. You want that kind of Goldilocks zone for you. Not too hot, not too cold, but just right for your specific needs and the high that you want to have without going overboard. And now the exciting part, how to consume marijuana and the differences and some pros and cons of each of those methods. Uh, the first is my personal favorite. I absolutely love it and prefer it more than anything, and that is vaping it. Uh, vaping it is very clean, it's very easy, it avoids a lot of the more toxic side of things from actually smoking the plant, and it is very efficient. Uh, you do have to be careful because in the oils, uh, it actually will have a very high, or can have, a very high THC count because it is a concentrate, but it's very awesome because you just pick it up, take a hit, and you're done. No loading it, no unplugging it, no having to clean it, no lighting it on fire, none of that. Super easy, super awesome. That is my favorite. Uh, then there is, of course, smoking it, loading the flour into a water pipe, um, a regular pipe, rolling it into a joint, etc. And then obviously that's the one most people are common with, more most people are in the groove with. And it's efficient and it's classic, so hey. Why not? And uh, that is actually the delivery system that most people use still to this day, though I do think it's switching over to the vaping side a little bit more. Uh, third is your topicals. So these are creams that can be rubbed on different parts of your body, and those usually are pretty high in CBD for the medicinal purposes, uh, for joint pain, stuff like that. And you can actually get those topicals that are 100% CBD, so you can kind of avoid the not so great side effects of too much THC, or if you're super THC sensitive, uh, you don't have to constantly be getting the THC experience. You can just get the CBD and avoid the paranoia. And finally, you have edibles. Now, edibles are a fantastic way to be able to ingest the marijuana itself, uh, but there is some caveats to it. You always have to remember with an edible, it comes on much slower and it leaves much slower. So this can take an hour or an hour and a half to actually start getting the side effects and being able to feel the high. However, you'll be higher for a prolonged amount of time. Now, usually this is more gradual. It's a fantastic way to be able to kind of have a long, prolonged high and be able to balance out the anxiety levels and all of the levels in general. Uh, but you do have to remember too that they, they can come quite potent. So you want to be sure that you're not getting an extreme gummy or you want to also be sure to check the labels and, and see how much one serving is because sometimes it'll be one gummy but it could be five servings and you don't want to end up in that situation because you can have the same adverse effects as um, getting too much THC in any other form. Unfortunately it's going to stick around longer. But edibles are a fantastic way if you're not a big smoker if you have sensitive lungs, uh, anything of that nature, it's a great option. And it's also just a great option to throw in the mix once in a while just to have a little bit of different experience. So, those are the different ways to consume it. So in conclusion, we have gone over sativa, indica, the differences, how they affect you, the different ways to consume them, what could be right for you, and how to fine tune it. Do always remember that it is safe if you don't have a lot of experience to go to a weed professional or a doctor, they do exist. They can help you get it balanced out just fine. Or at the dispensaries, go ahead and talk to a bud tender. They will be able to give you some different ideas of what the different strains are and help you decide. And of course, if you have that buddy who's just, let's say it, a stoner, they probably could help you out too. Just remember to go in moderation, try a little bit, and increase it as you go to get it balanced out correctly, and you're going to have a great time. As a matter of fact, you might have a high time.
So that about concludes it for this topic. If you want to see the in-depth blog, go ahead and check it out over on Xanfree. There's some fantastic resources there and some fantastic products. And other than that, I hope you have a fantastic day and we'll see you on the next video.